Soybeans, as with any kind of beans, it is a complex carbohydrate. Now, there are amino acids in beans that give them some protein quality, but for our purposes, they're what we would call a low quality protein. All right? They're not particularly efficient for building muscle. So when people say, uh, well, I'm a vegetarian, or I don't like to eat a lot of meat, so I eat a lot of soy, they're selling themselves short. Not that soy is unhealthy, but you will not get the same sort of protein benefits from soy as you will from the chicken or the egg or that kind of bread. Almost everything that you can possibly eat is going to have some fat content, even if it's minimal. I mean, corn has corn oil in it. I mean, who thinks of corn as being a food with fat in it? Unless you're eating popcorn at the movies. It's good. All good stuff has fat. There you go. Okay? But everything has something. So we really want to minimize that, okay? There are essential fatty acids, EFAs, that actually promote the fat burning process, okay? But it takes very little of that. The, your requirement for those is very low. So if you're eating a little bit of fish a couple of times a week, tuna, something like that, you're going to get those essential fatty acids. So for the most part, we really, really want to minimize the fats, okay? Think about this for a second. Okay, we emphasize on the, um, on the one sheet that we want to, each time we have a complete meal, it should be a protein and a carbohydrate and a vegetable, right? Okay. Now, lots of people, oh, I hear this all the time, lots of people will say, um, well, I had a big pile of mashed potatoes for, um, for lunch. And I'll say, well, what was your protein? Oh, I didn't have a protein, I just ate the potato. <laughs> all right. It is not just important, it is essential that we always combine the protein with the carbohydrate, okay? Protein's role in the human body is building and regenerating tissue. It's a building nutrient. The role of carbohydrates is for energy. It fuels your body. They serve two separate purposes. Mashed potatoes are a carbohydrate, complex carbohydrate. If you're going to eat a complex carbohydrate, you want to have a protein with it. That's all. And if you're going to have a protein and a complex carbohydrate together, as you should, you don't want those things to be out of balance. In other words, you have a half a chicken breast and a big pile of mashed potatoes. That's, that's not what we want to do. We want to keep things in balance. Alcohol, when it's, and it is a simple carbohydrate, when it is in your stomach, converts quickly into sugar. In case you're not all familiar with this concept known as spot reduction, let's be real clear on this because this just doesn't exist. The belief is, and it comes from these idiotic infomercials on TV, the belief is that if you've got a tummy and you want to get rid of that tummy, well, you do a bunch of tummy exercise and that burns up all the fat from your tummy. Right? It, it's just nonsense. It doesn't work. Okay? Your body will store body fat proportionally throughout your body and it will take it off the same way. But you cannot reduce it from one specific area, which is the whole notion of spot reduction. You can't do that short of surgery. All right? With surgery, they go in and suck it out from anywhere. But aside from that, no. So the notion that you're going to be able to you know, just lose that, that's, that's never going to happen. You're going to have to reduce the body fat from all over. On days that we're doing resistance training, lifting weights, building muscles, First of all, any cardio that you do before that workout should not be anything more than a five to ten minute warm up. Who does more than that before their workout? Five to ten, you don't do much more. And you don't do high intensity either. I've watched. Oh, ouch. Man. Five to ten minute warm up. Understand something. The available, I love you though. The available energy in your body, we want that to be used for our primary goal of building muscle tissue. If we get on a machine and use up all of our available energy doing that, then we have nothing left to build muscle with. I will tell you that I see no shortage, lots of people in this gym who get over there and they go for hours on those until they're sopping wet with sweat and they get out there and start working out. And I just scratch my head. It's insane. It's the worst possible, the most ineffective way to work out that you can get. So you shouldn't do both. You shouldn't 
No, you shouldn't do the long cardio sessions ahead of time, okay? Once you have finished your resistance training session for the day, your muscle building session, if you want to do cardio then, guess what? That's perfect. You know why? Because you've gotten out here and worked out, you've used up all your available muscle glycogen, that's carbohydrates stored in the muscle, all right? You've used that up. Once you've used that up, your body has to then switch over to its next available source of energy, which is body fat. So if you finish that session and then go do a cardio session afterwards, that's body, that's how body fat you're going to burn, which is good. The only concern is if you go too long, then you start to cross the line and you might burn up muscle tissue. So I recommend when you finish your workout and you want to do cardio, I recommend a 20 minute limit after the workout. If you want to come in on an off day and do cardio, do all you like, 30, 40, whatever you want to do. So you should alternate days. If you're going to do resistance one day, then you don't want to do resistance again the next day, or you don't want to train the same muscles on consecutive day. Okay? So if you're doing resistance training one day, then do cardio the next, unless you're doing like a split routine or something. When you're working out, this has to do with how much you sweat when you work out, okay? Because I think it's a pretty common perception that if you're working out really hard, you should be sopping wet with sweat, okay? All right, that's actually false. The truth is that if you're getting your body temperature too high, and this, is a, this applies to muscle, to, uh, to resistance training, not to cardio. When you're doing cardio, you sweat all you like, whatever. But when you're doing, when you're doing resistance training, if you're, if you're really sweating a lot, then your body's blood, your circulatory system, is going to have to try to take some place of the perspiration, and it's going to have to work to try to cool you. And if, the, if, your, if your blood is being used to try to cool your temperature, your core temperature, then it's not being used as efficiently in the muscles where you want it, when the muscles are working. So when you're working out, doing resistance training, your body temperature should never get so high that you're sweating really bad. If so, then back, back off the intensity a little bit and sweat a little less. If you, if you are working out, if you're doing a cardio session and your intensity level is too high, then you are going to go above your fat burning zone and you're burning up muscle glycogen, which is the energy you want to use you know, when you're out here training with weights. So the, I think the best rule of thumb with cardio is, is you should be at a pace, at a level of intensity where you can still hold a conversation. If you can't speak, if you're gasping here, you can't speak, that's too much. Please understand something. The whole purpose of working out and getting healthier is to improve your quality of life. If you're healthier, you feel better, you live longer, all those good things. However, if improving quality, your quality of life means giving up all the things that make life worth living, then we haven't really improved your quality of life, okay? So you want to sort of walk the fine line. We certainly want you to be healthier. That's our ultimate goal. If you're healthier, you feel better, you live longer. All but, but I don't want it more energy exactly. But I don't want to suggest that that means you give up everything that makes life worth living. But when you're going to indulge in something, do it in moderation. And when it's over, say, okay, that's it, and get right back on track. And, you know, like for starters, when you're first starting out with all this, I would, I would recommend maybe one meal per week maximum in which you're going to have something you're not supposed to eat. Okay? And then as you get leaner and you know, you might want to cheat a little more. It's, it's sort of a personal discretionary decision.